Welcome back to Ride and Glide. Today we're going to be reviewing InMotion's newest scooter to the market, the Climber. So those of you who've been watching for a while, you'll know that we've had some InMotion products in before. The previous scooter that we've sold here at Ride and Glide and reviewed is the L9. Uh, that then became the S1, they just changed the top speed on it basically, but the same scooter. We've also done the EUCs, they're very well known for making unicycles, electric unicycles, like the V11, the V12, now the V13's coming out. So they're always at the forefront of design. Um, Inmotion are known for being a high quality company, um, especially in the scooter market, and having a very good waterproof rating on their products. So we'll put that to the test today. This is the first scooter that they've made with dual motors. Now, what InMotion do well is they keep things simple. So it's not gonna be the most powerful scooter in the world. It won't be have all of the gadgets that you've got on some of the more expensive, powerful scooters. But what it will be is a high build quality, I would imagine, or I hope. The waterproof rating will be high and it will be very functional. We'll go through all of that now and then we'll take it out uh, and give it a proper test um, out on the streets or you know, out in the forest, see what we can find depending on the weather. Um, we'll give it a hill climb, we'll do a speed test, we'll do have some braking tests as well, um, and we'll really see what it can do. So as always, we'll start right down at the bottom of the scooter. So where the wheels are, you can see the tires here. Now they're a 10 inch by 2.125 tire, decent size, um, good for definitely good for hard ground, that type of thing. Not gonna be amazing off-road. I always prefer a wider, up to sort of three to four inch tire for off-road, but as a commuting tire on a hard surface, 10 by anything over two is a really nice size. They're pneumatic tires. Uh, we've got inner tubes in them. They're not tubers, they're tubed. Um, they say they come with a very special thickened inner tube uh, to reduce the likelihood of punctures. Obviously you can put slime in as well, but they're trying to go for that kind of um, really economic, easy to use, low maintenance scooter here. So they're still building it in that uh, sort of commuter functionality, that day-to-day -day use um, to make it easy for the rider. So. Inside the tires, you can see we've got this sort of orange here, front and back. What it is, is basically just the decal on the motors. Now there are two 450 watt motors, that's nominal power, so 900 watts of nominal power, brushless motors, hub motors there. Peak power, they say each motor can kick off 750 watts at each end, so we're looking at 1500 watt peak power total. So we will see if that can reach the 23 mile per hour speed that they have uh, claimed that this scooter can reach. I think 1500 watts coupled with the battery size, I think it should be quite capable of that pretty easily. But we will put that to the test later on. So we've got the two motors there. Come up from there, you can see at the rear, we have a disc brake with the cable here. So we've got a mechanical disc brake, lever up at the top. One disc brake, and two regen brakes. Because we have dual motors, they are using both motors so they can be regen, so it's an electronic braking system. So we've got the manual mechanical rear disc brake and two regen brakes. Now, personally, that's not my favorite. I like to have two levers, it makes me feel safer, but they're very effective from past experience, the regen braking. We will be putting that to test. Moving up from the caliper, you can see we've got the disc here. We've got this sort of plastic covering at the back, which has reflectors on it, as you can see. Come up here for the rear fender. Now on the rear fender, we've got the light here, so I'm just gonna turn it on. So you hold down the power button on the display, turn it on, and when you hit the brake lever, the rear light flashes. Now this is when, with the lights not on, so when I hit the brake lever, you see a red light flashing. When the lights are on, which I'll show you here, now, when I press the lights on, it's a solid light as the rear light. Press the brake lever again, and that solid light flashes. Really good safety feature on all scooters now, and they're obviously thinking about how uh, road legal this scooter is going to be with regards to the safety aspects that they're going to have to meet uh, in the UK once they become legal, but also around Europe and the rest of the world as well. And generally speaking, it's just a really good safety feature to let people know when you're braking. That's built into the rear fender. On the rear fender as well, you'll also see it's got the little latch here. So as the stem folds down, which is very, very simple, I'll actually show you that now because it's so simple. I'm right here. Press the button really easily on the stem, flick the stem open, and as that comes down, this latch flicks out, and that hooks underneath there, so you can lift the scooter. 
with ease. And actually, that's pretty light for a dual motor scooter, especially with the battery size it's got. So that's just under 21 kilos, which is still definitely classed as a portable scooter, especially in a dual motor market where most dual motor scooters are very, very powerful. So just show you how simple that was again, flick it back and the stems lock back up. Super simple design, very, very good. We move along the deck and you've got this nice Inmotion logo with a rubberized deck. They are fast becoming my favorite style of deck, that rubber mat. Even when it's damp, it still gives you good grip and it's soft on the feet. So I really, really like that style of deck. Along the side, you can see we have the uh, charge port, nice cover that flips open there. And that is a 42 volt, two amp charger that comes with the scooter. Takes three and a half hours on a fast charge, probably up to about seven hours on a standard charger. Standard charger comes with the scooter. So we're looking about seven hours charge. That charges up the 42 volt, 13 amp battery inside. Now, 13 amp is a decent size. You'd be expecting to get sort of 30 miles plus out of that riding conservatively. So I'd say like, you know, a lightweight rider, 70 kilos, riding at 10 to 12 miles an hour, something like that. Heavier rider, maybe like myself, who's just under 90 kilos, um, maybe with a bit of up and down, you might be 20, 20 plus, but it's a decent size 13 amp hour. Coupled with the dual motors, that's gonna make it more efficient, probably at lower speeds as well. So. I'm not sure how they've done it, but they've managed to get these dual motors and a decent sized battery into a scooter that weighs sort of 20 kilos or just over. So very, very impressive. Um, obviously, what, what they seem to have done is maybe cut some other things out to keep it in that portable category. So what I'm obviously seeing immediately here is there's no suspension. Tires are big, they look comfortable, but on their previous model, they had front and rear. They had a spring underneath and dual forks on the L9. Um, but on here, there isn't any obvious suspension. So we'll talk about that when we take it out. Um, and hopefully it's still as comfortable as its predecessor, but that remains to be seen. Moving up onto the stem, very neat welding round here. Up, another safety warning sticker here, as we've got on the back. And we've talked about the stem clamp already. Now, just from sitting here, there's absolutely no give in that at all. Obviously over time that can change. A lot of scooters, even almost every scooter I would say has some rock in the stem. This is rock solid at the moment, which is a good sign for starting off and it means it's been um, put together well as well. So it's, we haven't even had to tighten that ourselves. We always go over everything here, but this came out of the box in really, really good condition. And you've got the front fender, which is gonna stop a lot of the water uh, splashing up onto. But as we've said with these scooters, they have a very good IP rating or they always have previously. This one is no different. So the entire scooter has an IP56 rating, which is a really high rating. So that means the water resistance is six, which is light jets, spray, splashes, that kind of thing. The battery has an IPX7 rating, which basically means it's been submerged for a certain amount of time. Uh, I think it's a meter of water for 30 minutes. Check out the IP video that we've done and it will explain all of that. But what that does mean is it's, the battery's been able to handle an immense amount of water all over it, including on its ports and it has still functioned once it's been left to dry. Uh, I think it's 72 hours, something like that, and then it still functions perfectly. So really impressive from in motion. We love that, especially in countries like where we live, where they're quite wet, um, but obviously even, even hotter countries, you're still gonna get downpours and things like that, and even humidity, um, so obviously causing moisture. So it's really, really important to get those genuine IP ratings from decent companies like in motion. So very, very impressed with that. Running up here, you can see it says in motion, climb hills with ease. Now, as I've said, lots of scooters say they're good at climbing hills. We're gonna put that to the test, climb hills with ease. I mean, I do wonder if that's gonna be weight, um, if our weight's gonna affect that a lot because obviously the tests that they do are always factory based. So they'll be with a 70 kg rider in warm conditions up a light gradient. They say it goes up to 36 degree slope, but we'll see. Um, we're really gonna put that to the test because these dual motor scooters are good at climbing hills often, but they often claim to be a little bit better than what their spec shows. So don't worry, we will test that out ourselves. Now we're getting up to the display. So we come up to the headset, the display and the handlebars. You can see from that side, here's the clip. That's what, and when you fold it down, that's what locks into the one on the rear fender to allow you to lift it up. On the front side, which you might be able to see there, we have the light. We'll show you that in a minute when we turn it on and off. On the left side, you've got these two grips. They're pretty comfortable. I wouldn't say they're super ergonomically designed, but they're pretty comfortable. Nice thumb throttle on the right. I personally like thumb throttles. That's easy. And the left hand brakes. So that's for the rear mechanical disc brake we spoke about earlier. And a little 
bell, which I think you have to put on as a safety feature. Um, not particularly loud, but yeah, just like a standard bike bell on there. Like I said before, I prefer two brakes. But as I keep saying, we've got the dual regen brakes, one on each motor, plus that brake. So hopefully this is gonna have some good stopping power. Now, to turn it on, press the middle button, which is the power. Not sure if you can see from there. You've got your miles per hour here. You've got your mode that you're riding in. So there are three modes. If you double click, that'll take it to eco, double click, mid mode, double click again, sport mode. So that'll be your fastest mode. Click once the light comes on and I'll click again and it turns off. So click once to turn on, click once to turn off. Obviously I'm angling that up, so right into your eyes. That also turns on the rear light as well. Now a really cool feature I wanted to show you is the app. So we turn on the scooter, we download the InMotion app, you log in and what you will see here is it is searching for this model. So I click that and you'll see the Bluetooth sign come in on the display. Now what this will show me is my remaining mileage, roughly, so how much battery I've got left. Speed I'm going, even shows north here, so it's giving you an idea of your compass, but it's got some really cool features. So if we slide along, you've obviously got your trip, your total miles, uh, your duration of ride, power on your duration, max speed, that kind of stuff. Come across again, and you can record your ride. So you click record, and off you go. Now, that also records your GPS speed, how far you've gone, where you've gone, how long you've gone for. And then what you can do is go into the community and share all your results with people if you want to, go on different rides, talk about the rides you've been on. So there's a community-based aspect as well. Uh, discover, so again, like I said, you can go to shops there, like local shops, make friends with people, all that kind of stuff. Then you go to your profile. On your profile, you can change, or talk about all your vehicles, you can have them all listed here, settings of all your vehicles, that kind of thing. One last thing I wanted to show you, which is really cool, is here, you can uh, lock your scooter if you want to. So you press that and it will lock it. So someone can't then just obviously go and ride it. You can diagnose your scooter. So you go there and it goes through all the different parts. It says motherboard, motor, battery, um, meter, whatever that means, and handlebar. Checks everything's okay, in line and calibrated, which is really cool. Uh, you can turn your lights on and off from here, but obviously why you'd want to do that, I don't know. Um, cruise control, so you can put automatic cruise control on by hitting that, sets into cruise, obviously click off, takes it off, and zero speed start. That is a really useful function, so if you want to push and then go, saves your battery, can make it a bit safer, so you don't just hit the accelerator, um, you hit zero speed start to turn on, we don't want that on. And then change from kilometers to miles per hour. Vehicle calibration, firmware updates. So a really useful app. I love the record your ride function. That's uh, like really cool for me. Tells you how far you've gone, how fast you've gone, all that kind of stuff. And you can see what routes you've done. So then you can try and maybe beat your times or just compare you know, different times of the year or whatever, how uh, conditions affect how fast you're riding, how far you're riding, all that sort of stuff. Right, so. I'm pretty sure we've been over everything on the scooter inside. It's like I said, it's a very simple, basic scooter. Could be a real game changer in the market, in my opinion. We don't stock these yet, so it's really interesting. I'm using this as a test to see how I like it. But as a dual motor scooter goes, it's going to be very reasonably priced, just over a thousand pounds, I think, for a high quality dual motor scooter. So it could be a bit of a game changer in the market, but we'll see. Um, the lack of having dual brakes and that kind of thing, lack of suspension obviously will play a part for a lot of people. Um, so don't worry, we're gonna put it through its paces. Let's get out there now and see what it can do. We've made it out. So we've done the studio shoot, we've taken a proper look at the scooter. Now we're gonna put it through its paces. Speed run, brake test, we're gonna do acceleration test, we're gonna do the hill climb, we're gonna do all of that. In Motion obviously is a highly built scooter. They haven't produced a scooter for a while, or at least a different one. They've never produced a dual motor. So I'm really excited about trying this one out in the wild. Right, helmets on, let's go. So first impressions of the In Motion Climber, it's smooth, no suspension, hit a few big bumps so far. You do feel it, but it's still pretty comfortable. Um, we're gonna do a speed run. We're gonna do a hill climb. We're gonna chest out in the water see how waterproof it is because they're known for their um, IP ratings in motion. We'll try a little bit of bumpy off-road in a couple of seconds when we go around the corner here. And we're going to do a brake test as well and give a conclusion at the end. So far, having those dual motors is a big difference to the original uh, in motion. I can feel it already. Although it does feel like it's slightly restricted, but we'll test that out in the speed run shortly. 
Right, off we go. It's still really wet today, you can see. It's pretty cold now. Oh, it's only got a back brake. See, that's one thing I don't like about scooters that don't have two lever brakes. This has regen on both wheels, which you can apparently adjust in the app, but we've just got that one back brake lever. So it's great, you know, for little skids or whatever, but I like when you're at speed, two makes, just makes me feel so much more comfortable. Right, we're just going off on a bumpy trail now. There's big puddles and big rocks. We're gonna do a proper water test later, but we might as well go through a couple of these puddles whilst we're on our way, just to test it out properly. Right, I can see quite a few coming up. Now this is really flinty ground. I'm trying to roll over it as much as possible. It is interesting that there is no suspension on this. They've chosen to do that. I think that's probably to save weight or expense because it is quite reasonably priced. Here we go. Whoa, disgusting. Handles it well though. Look, even that, they're so rutted. These are actually potholes. So it's not just like puddles, it's taking a bit of a pound in the scooter whilst we go through these. Look at this view though, this is what we do it for. Oh, you don't get many days like this at this time of year. Whoa! <laughs> another big puddle there, slipping all over the place. It's soaking wet, as you can see from these right, here's another big puddle. This one's gonna finish me, I reckon. Here we go. <laughs> oh dear. And some more, here we go. Let's not miss any out. Get the full shebang and the last. Oh. Like I said, we will take out in the rain, but we've certainly got it wet. And it's handling it fine. So as we expected, it didn't take long and we've had an absolute downpour of rain. Obviously living in this country, weather's terrible a lot of the time. Uh, even in hot countries, like we've said, the humidity can really affect things within the scooter, so those IP ratings are really important. Now this, having IPX6, IP56 rating on parts of the scooter, it's really gonna have to um, be able to handle water well. We're gonna test that out now through some fairly deep puddles and some really wet ground. It's spitting as well, it's not hammering now, but if it starts raining, we'll stay out um, and just keep going and see if we can break it. It's actually raining now. I've got rain all over the scooter, so the display's soaked. My hands are soaked. There isn't a part of this scooter that is still dry. Let's get right in these edge puddles here. Whoa. I'm not avoiding any of them. This is, it would be nice to have some suspension. It's handling it, but this is a really, really rough terrain. Just avoid people there. Go down, look, look at this pothole. Whoa. <laughs> Keep going. Nice and wet, it's still performing perfectly. The throttle's still very forgiving, nothing's jamming up. Brakes still feel good. Let's come round this corner here, do a little skid through the puddle if we can. Woo! That is the water testing done. I'll meet you back in the shop for a conclusion. Woo. Back in the shop. That is the water test done. As you can see, the scooter is soaked. I'm soaked, although the fenders have kept my trousers pretty dry. It's been pouring with rain now. It did start to rain at the end. Display got absolutely soaked. What I love is the rubber deck. I've said it before, it's my favorite kind of deck. It still keeps grippy even when it's wet. The scooter is still working perfectly. We've been out there for about half an hour messing around in the water. We've gone through some pretty deep puddles, obviously over the next few days. We'll keep monitoring it as well. But for the moment, everything is functioning as it should, so the IP ratings seem to stack up. Great job, in motion. Okay, in motion climber, time for the speed run. It's really cold now, I'm gonna do my coat up. Also, I don't want it flapping to try and slow me down. Supposedly, this goes about 22, 23 miles an hour in kilometers, you're gonna be looking at 45, something like that, 43, 44, 45. I'm ready, let's go. Three, two, one, go. It's pretty quick. We're at 35 kilometers an hour already. 36, 37. Hit the slight downhill slope now. Feels comfortable, feels smooth. It won't go over 38. It's sticking at 38. And that's the end of it. Interesting. 38 kilometers per hour. What's that, 22, 23 mile an hour? It wouldn't go faster. It is so beautiful out here. 
one of the things I like about riding scooters or skateboards or whatever it is, anything outside really, is you just get to spend time in nature. It sounds cheesy, it's so good for you, good for your mental health. That sun, low level sunlight getting your eyes. Sets your circadian rhythms apparently, doesn't it? Helps you sleep. It's just such a nice place to be. Riding a scooter like this, there's, I don't think it really gets much better. You don't actually need a high performance scooter to have fun out here, but we are testing this for what it is, the climber. So we're gonna try another hill in a minute. Um, obviously we've done the speed test now and it was restricted to 38 kilometers an hour. That's really interesting. Um, I thought it would go faster than that, but they've restricted it themselves. So as we're going up this sort of low gradient hill, it's really easy for the climber. I think it's time to go and test it out on a much steeper hill. Off we go. This is called the climber. It's supposed to have power, it's supposed to have torque. So we're gonna test it out by seeing its pulling power. To do that, I need my able assistant, Toby. As always, he's on hand. What up, dweebs? Oh my God. <laughs> the climber's Whoa. climbing. Easy oh. on that throttle, big boy. Oh my God. Oh, there's plenty more power in this. Oh. Are you hanging on? Oh. Oh. Are you hanging it's on? a bit herky jerky. You're yanking oh. me. I need to give it more beans, Tony. Oh, yeah, go on, beat it. Full kit, full tin. Oh. Here we go. Oh, these are some strange The climber's noises. climbing. We're cooking. The climber's climbing. Mate. Those wheels are going to be about cooking. Micro mobility. Oh, my God. Basically, oh. Oh. this is the perfect scooter for pulling your children up a hill. Yeah, mate. As long as they are. They On the regular occasion, that, that needs steel. to happen. Oh. I mean, What's the comfort level making like? making some very strange noises. Oh, I don't think we're going to handle this. Here we go, Tobes. Are you ready? Oh, I, well, I can only follow you. Ooh, ah, 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 my stomach. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that was terrifying. I think we've, we've all learned a valuable lesson here. Um, if you're going to climb a hill attached to someone on a micro scooter, the climber's pretty good model to do that on. It's the best one we've ever tested for that. If you have children who are really lazy or just get tired really quickly, quite brave, strap one of them in, get on the climber and pull them up a hill. Right, I'm pulling you down, yeah? Well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that showed it's got some power. It's definitely got some pulling power. Let's get back out on the trails and see what else it can do. Following on from our huge success of pulling a child's scooter, well, an adult on a child's scooter, up the hill on a lower gradient, we're now gonna try and take on a much steeper gradient. Toby's not here because he said something about not wanting to be hum humiliated again or something like that, but I found someone else. Pete's here to help me today. Okay, are you ready, Pete? I'm ready. Hold on tight. Oh my God. Three, two, one, go. I'm not giving it much throttle at the moment. <laughs> Now I'm gonna have to start giving it more. It's climbing well. It's climbing well. Oh, we're rocking. Are you on it? Yeah, I'm on. Keep going. Are you on it? Keep going, I'm on. Just, keep going. Oh, Jesus. Keep going. It's keep like going. I'm being pulled back by a bear. <laughs> keep going. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well. I think it was a smooth ride. Look how rutted this is. If this That's was, if this mean, was a yeah. smooth tarmac, we'd have been well away. This would be a new sport, I reckon. <laughs> Chariot racing <laughs> in the modern era. Anyway, I don't know why we did that. <laughs> but the climber does climb. It's got some pull, hasn't it? I'm 92 kilos. It's pulling, what are you? You must be 85 kilos. Yeah, 85, 90 kilos. Plus the weight of the scooter. That's got to be Plus at least this half little a bad boy as well. That is, you know, 100. And, 70 kilos, whatever, worth of man meat. That's impressive. Getting towed up a hill on that piece of shit. Yeah, exactly, over this shitty road. That shows the climber really has got some bite. It really does. Right, I'm done now, on to the next. We're gonna compare it against a single Pure Air Pro second gen 500 watt motor, just to give an example of what a single motor 500 watt looks like up a hill compared to two times 450 watt motors. Pete's riding it today. Pete, they look quite similar, don't they, the scooters, obviously, apart from the dual motor. Yeah, same size, same length. 
They are very similar tire size. Yes, tire so it's, size. So it's very similar. So the only difference, 500 watts there, we've got 900 watts here across two motors. And what I've always said is I feel that pushing and pulling with the motor, so front and rear motor, is so much better than even one powerful single motor. Always feels better to me. Let's give it a go. Okay, Pete, are you ready? I'm ready. This is a 200 meter climb. Three, two, one, go. It's a good pull away. I'm at 27 kilometers an hour already. Sucker. Try and pick the line. It's a horrible pill, this. It starts getting steep now. He's miles behind. That single motor, it makes such a difference. 500 watt scooters do struggle up this hill. It's an easy climber. It's called the climber and it's climbing well. Uh, I think it's going to make it, Luke. Come on. Come on. Come on, puppy. It hasn't dropped under 20 kilometers per hour. What's that, 12, 13 kilometers, uh, 12, 13 miles per hour, the whole hill. And it is a steep hill, believe me. It's hard to walk up. Easy, now we're accelerating off again. I'm pulling away. I'm hitting seven, eight. Come on. Nine. Come on. We hit double figures. And I'm off. You know you're bursting away. Maybe. You're bursting it. away. Here we go. Oh, look, you still got nothing. <laughs> Let's stop it there. Okay. The climber climbed, as we hoped it would. It's a really simple scooter. There's not loads of bells and whistles on it. Simple in motion are known for that, but it is good at climbing. I didn't go under 20 kilometers an hour the whole way up. It's so about 12, really? 13 mile an hour, yeah. Whereas normally on a single motor scooter or even on a single thousand watt, um, motor scooter, which we've done before, they really struggle through that it middle like section. It ate the hill up. It really did eat the hill up. So, single motor 500 watt does make up the hill, does, but it struggles. You imagine riding that, that's your sort of road legal type of scooter across Europe. When the uh, rules change in the UK, that's the type of thing that's going to be legal. But you imagine going up a hill at one, two miles an hour. It's well, quite six kilometers. That's what I'm Well, I what's that, three miles an hour? Yeah, that's so dangerous, you might as well walk. <laughs> Whereas you do, if the government <laughs> are going to be maybe more sensible in my opinion, obviously make them safer and put all the other legislation in, but having a slightly more powerful scooter or spreading the power across two motors makes a huge difference when climbing hills. Right, on to the next. Let's go. Obviously, we've now been and done the water test. We've been for a bit of water today as well, but we obviously went out in the rain. It was absolutely soaking. One thing I have mentioned before, and I'll mention again, the grip on the deck is really good. That rubber deck just keeps your feet locked in even when it's soaking wet, like it really is soaking wet now. It's got mud all over it as well. And it's totally locked in. I love that feature. What I would like to see is some kind of um, heel support. I like riding with my foot back. Even, you know, I know it only goes 20 miles an hour, but it's still quite quick. I much prefer scooters with dual brakes and um, heel support to give you that sort of locked in, for me, that locked in safe riding style. Handlebars are 50 centimetres wide, which is actually wide enough. And it obviously being a sort of commuter style scooter, not yet in the UK, but obviously around Europe and whatever, this is going to um, be quite nimble and able to fit through tight areas. We're just going to hang a left here. And what we're going to do is head down a steep hill and I'm going to see how well it breaks because it's not just about breaking on the flat. It's actually about, you know, is it going to be safe if you're going down a steep hill? I've got one rear disc brake here, which again, I'll say again, I like having two, I much prefer it, but we do have the regen on both motors. Now we're coming to the top of the hill. This is the hill we do our testing on. We know how steep it is. I wanna see if we can control the scooter in these really wet conditions, and it's a really potholed hill as well. It's not a nice hill. If we can control the scooter all the way down. Obviously it's easier at the top, you don't want to overdo your brakes either. You know, you've heard a brake fade, but they literally overheat, <laughs> stop working. Bit squeaky there, but very controllable. You see, if I can come right down to a stop here, this is really wet and this part of the hill is quite steep. There we go, I'll just let it roll again. You can feel the motors kicking in. You can hear it, go, makes that sound, that sort of electronic sound similar to when you pull away. As you pull away on this scooter, it sounds almost like a rocket ship staying up. It goes whoop, like that sort of turbo kind of sound. And when you brake, apart from that squeak, you can hear it as well. That was pretty good. Right, that will take us in to the flat braking test then. Off we go. 
Right, now for the flat brake test. We've done it down the hill, just to see what the brakes are like. Quite impressed, actually. Now we're gonna stop from 15 mile an hour. I've got the rear mechanical disc brake and two regen brakes from the motors. You don't control them, they, you preset them. So you don't actually have a controller like you do on some scooters. Rear disc brake, and then both motors are gonna work with us. Right, off we go. Okay, we're getting up to 15 mile per hour now. Hold it steady, hold it steady, hold it steady. Oh, big skid with that rear brake. Right, that actually stopped really quickly. Let me have a look. I'm just gonna put the stand down. Obviously, this isn't exact science. We come over here to the measure. We have three meters and 10 centimeters from 15 mile per hour. About nine feet, just over nine feet. That is a really good stopping time. If you look, that's to the front of the scooter as well. Pretty impressed with that, to be honest. Very good in motion. Okay, I think it is time to test the acceleration of this dual motored climber. And we'll put it up against a single motored 500 watt scooter, off we go. Right, we're here to do the acceleration test. I'm on the In Motion Climber. In Motion's newest model, it's got dual motors obviously, so it's faster than the last. We're gonna compare it today. Pete's riding the Pure Air Pro Gen 2, 500 watt motor. I've got two 450 watt motors. The reason we're doing the comparison, Pure is a really popular scooter in this country with that single motor design. Just gonna show you the difference between a single and a dual. So here we go. Ready, Pete? Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh, shot away. God, it makes a sound, it's like, like it's a rocket going on. Well, that's quite quick. Oh, going in the water. Wow. <laughs> well, that's the difference. Even between a lower power dual motor, and this is one of the lower power dual motors that I've ever ridden, two 450 watt motors, it makes an incredible amount of difference on acceleration compared to something like the Pure Air single motor. So 500 watts there, two 450s, big difference. Off onto the grass, little skid there. Oh, it handles it well, because these are only slick tires, you know. Went how, oh, look at that. It really gripped on there, and I thought I was gonna absolutely slide out. Come around the corner here. Still only got that back brake, remember? We can only do little slides. Right. On the gravel, here we go. Nice. Hit the lip. Onto the field, right? This is absolutely soaking. This is absolutely soaking wet. Soaking wet. You touch the brake, you slide. Oh, even the front wheel's sliding because it's obviously spinning now. It's a dual motor. You've got to be careful when you're on slippery surfaces that that front doesn't just slide out on you. Let's get back onto here. Never gonna wheelie this one. Doesn't have the power. Oh, that's cold. Right, what can I say? In motion climber, dual motored, 450 watt, 450 watt scooter, restricted to 38 kilometers an hour. Pretty fast though, 22 mile an hour, 23 mile an hour, something like that. Feels smooth when you're riding on smooth ground. Handles the off-road, minor off-road, lumps, bumps, things like that. I wouldn't say it's an off-road scooter without suspension but it was comfortable when we went over the bumps. It absolutely smoked the pure air in the acceleration test and the hill climb. That just shows what that little bit more power on those two motors can do. It also obviously pulled up a manual scooter as well, not halfway up the hill, which to be honest is really impressive. That shows how much torque that scooter's got. We've done the braking down the hill, the brakes felt good. I still don't like a single lever brake. I think any amendments to this scooter, it's got to add um, a front disc brake as well, personal preference, and probably add as well a rear foot plate. For me, that would be a big deal, but they've kept it super light. I mean, look, it's so easy to pick up. It's powerful, it's the waterproof rating on it. We've absolutely annihilated it. We've driven it in the pouring rain, through puddles. We've stayed out for about an hour and a half altogether in the water with it, and it still works perfectly. Emotion have done a really good job with this. It's not one of those massive, super powerful off-road blasters or like racers, but for a reasonably priced, water resistant, almost waterproof scooter, I don't think you're gonna get much better than that. If you wanna try it out, come down to Ride and Glide. We're gonna definitely keep this one in and I think we're probably gonna order a few as well because I think there's a place for it in the market, 100%. Um, 
If you want to contact us, give us a call, send us a text, get us an email, www.rideandglide.co.uk. Like and subscribe, we're always doing reviews. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Thank you.